Hello everyone. Next speaker will be Jonas Welter. Uh, Siemens folks might know him already from our issue tracker. If you see their label upstream, usually Jonas is taking care for that on behalf of us. And he's going to talk about how, is, how, is gonna, how is he is doing this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Roger. Um, I'm very happy to be here and, and to tell you something about my daily work for Siemens. And as Roger told, I contribute to GitLab on behalf of Siemens, and I want to show you how that works. But uh, just a few words about me at the beginning. My name is Jonas Welter, and I'm a team leader and software engineer at Nose Engineering uh, here in Switzerland. And yeah, Nose Engineering is a service provider um, for software engineering, um, a consulting company. So we do not develop our own software, but we uh, support our customers in doing so. And Nose Engineering has already uh, supported many well-known companies uh, in, support, uh, in developing software. And if you look closely, uh, Siemens is, of course, also one of our customers, uh, which we are very proud of. And actually, we have the pleasure to uh, support Siemens in different departments and teams. And I'm an example of that. I have been working um, as a contractor of Siemens for more than a year now. Well, Siemens is a quite a big company with a lot of employees and uh, 47,000 um, Siemens employees do write some code. And for these employees, um, Siemens provides its, uh, its own coding platform and actually this platform is a self-managed GitLab instance. Uh, what's GitLab? Well, uh, this is an open source event, so I guess most people here should uh, know GitLab, but GitLab is a single application for the entire DevOps lifecycle. And uh, very important, GitLab is open source and everyone uh, can contribute. So, um, yeah, Siemens operates um, a local GitLab instance, the Siemens platform. And if there's a new release or a new patch of, C uh, of GitLab, then the Siemens platform is updated. So nothing special so far, but uh, now uh, it often happens at Siemens that, that the Siemens employee want new features on code.siemens.com or uh, discover a bug. So what to do now? Um, one approach would be to just uh, extend the uh, GitLab instance, the, the local GitLab instance, the Siemens platform, and to fix the bugs there. But uh, that's, n that's not the Siemens way to do it. Um, the Siemens way is that Siemens is committed to open source and Siemens takes the upstream first approach. And What's, what's that? What that means in upstream first approach? The feature requests and bug reports for code.siemens.com are uh, assigned to me by Siemens. And then it's my turn. I implement the feature uh, directly in GitLab as a community uh, contributor. And then the cycle closes again as the um, changes are or the end up back in the uh, Siemens platform with the next update. Yeah, um, I think this is not the normal or not the usual approach for companies, but Siemens is different. Um, Siemens loves open source. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, in fact, Siemens uh, contributes to GitLab very heavily, uh, maybe more than any, any other company. And I think that many companies can really learn some something from different uh, from Siemens in, in this aspect. And at this point, I I would like to really compliment Siemens uh, for this mindset. And yeah, just keep it up. So uh, let's go back to the title slide. I want to uh, change the title a little bit for the next uh, part of the presentation how to contribute to GitLab on behalf of Siemens. Uh, I want to show you the different steps of this workflow. And let's begin with the first step. Um, 
you need to set up your development uh, environment to get started with GitLab development. And uh, in this aspect, GitLab uh, develop development kit will help you. It will uh, install a local uh, GitLab instance on your workstation, uh, including all the dependencies, all the services uh, that you need for uh, to get started with GitLab development. Uh, but of course, uh, it's the, the, the setup is not enough to start developing uh, GitLab. Uh, it might be very helpful to know about the programming languages and the technologies uh, and frameworks which are used in GitLab. Um, in the backend, it's all about Ruby and Ruby on Rails, and in the frontend, it's uh, Vue.js. Uh, don't worry, uh, there are plenty of uh, different tutorials and uh, introductions to this. So, uh, and also the, the GitLab, the official GitLab documentation is really helpful to get started in GitLab development. Second step. Um, now, a Siemens employee um, creates an issue on code.siemens.com. And if the issue is related to uh, GitLab itself, to the GitLab development, then it's assigned to me. And yeah, this can be, for example, a feature request or a bug report. And yeah, maybe what's a typical issue? This can be, for, exa for example, just a, a new application setting, a new project setting, or this can be the extension of an API, or some changes in the UI. For example, the, the topics page, which uh, Roger mentioned in the morning, um, was one issue, uh, yeah, and so on. And sometimes they are just small issues, and sometimes they are really complex ones. Next step, Let get, let's get all the needed information. Um, if it's a feature request, then we define the requirements, we discuss about uh, approaches, because mostly they are different ways, and we then identify the way uh, that makes the most sense for uh, Siemens and for GitLab. And yeah, uh, if it's a bug, we try to reproduce it and to, to um, understand the cause. And all that is happen in the in the issue um, and is visible to every everyone in the company and everyone can join the discussion. Next step, uh, and that's maybe or very similar to the previous step, but this time it's not on code.siemens.com, but on gitlab.com, and we discuss uh, the issue with uh, the GitLab employees and the GitLab community. Um, yeah, maybe a similar issue already exists on GitLab.com and we can join the ongoing discussion or uh, otherwise you can just create a new issue to start the discussion. But yeah, <laughs> on GitLab.com uh, there's an incredible number of open issues, so <laughs> make sure that uh, your issue gets the, the attention. And then it's again uh, about uh, discussing and of course about uh, representing the opinion of Siemens. And yeah, it can also happen that GitLab is, uh, does not agree with the opinion of Siemens and then you need to uh, talk again with the Siemens employees to yeah, to get a good solution for all. And when the uh, discussion is done, uh, it's time for the favorite step. It's time to implement the new feature or to uh, fix a bug. But of course, it's not only uh, about implementing. It's, uh, uh, it also includes the uh, documentation and the testing as well. And when you are done, you can finally submit the merge request to GitLab. And maybe you think that's it now, but uh, <laughs> uh, if you think that you are completely mistaken, because then the review starts. And yeah, if your merge request changes anything in the backend, you need an initial review from a GitLab engineer. And if you get this approval, then there's another uh, 
review uh, required from a, a backend maintainer. And if you if your merge request also changes changes anything in the front end, you need again two additional reviews from a, a front end engineer and from a front end maintainer. And the same applies for the uh, database and for the documentation and so on and so on. Um, in the best case, the, the merge request is very small and just one area is affected. And in this case, the review might be done in one day, but uh, mostly uh, multiple errors are affected and then it's uh, more a matter of uh, weeks instead of days. And yeah, this mostly depends on the size of the merge request. So it makes sense to consider whether uh, you can split your change, if it's a large one, into multiple merge requests to speed the process a little bit. For example, the, the topic merge request or the topic issue, I submitted, I guess, 25 merge requests or so for the, for the whole uh, topics. Um, and it took, yeah, it took a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, uh, yeah, I recently had a merge request that took, uh, yeah, many months, a few months to, to get merged. So if your merge request or if your change finally uh, is merged into GitLab, it's time to celebrate, you should celebrate. Um, because yeah, each merge request is important uh, for you and for GitLab. Um, you you will learn something new. You will get better with each merge request, and your contribution is uh, really appreciated by GitLab. Um, because for each release, they even give an award to the MVP of the community, and. Of course, it's not about uh, the award, it's not about uh, fame and glory, but uh, it's a nice recognition of, of your daily work. Yeah, but uh, before the Siemens employees can really use your new feature, um, the code.siemens.com platform needs to be updated, and that's done monthly by the code.siemens.com core team, and this team also uh, greatly supports me in uh, GitLab contributing. And yeah, so I'm not the only GitLab uh, contributor uh, on behalf of Siemens. And then it starts again. <laughs> um, but it's not that you have or that you handle uh, one issue and merge request after another. Uh, it's uh, it's more like you are uh, working on multiple merge requests at the same time. And the reason for that is that the review really takes some time by GitLab and really um, can cause some delays. Uh, for example, because of the different time zones. So if your uh, reviewer uh, lives in America, for example, then uh, one round trip with a comment and an answer uh, yeah, will take one day, one whole day. So, yeah, I usually have at least five merge requests uh, open at the same time. And uh, that yeah, works nice, but uh, it has the drawback that you really have to switch from issue to, to issue again and again, and that also needs some time. And so I already come to the end of my presentation, but I want to briefly mention the, uh, the mission of GitLab. Uh, everyone can contribute. Um, so that's the opportunity to uh, contribute to one of the largest largest open source projects in the world. And yeah, it, it absolutely doesn't matter how big the merge request is. It, it can just be, for example, um, fixing a spelling mistake in the documentation, for example. Uh, it does not matter. And for me, it's just just fun to contribute to a platform that I really use uh, on a daily basis. And not only me, but uh, millions of other users as well. Yeah, and that's all from me. Um, I hope I could give you an insight about uh, contributing to GitLab on behalf of Siemens. Uh, I think we have now time for some questions. Um, if you 
want to know anything and you can of course also uh, reach me later if you want to know something. We have already one question uh, uh, from um, Erchan. Um, what's your most favorite feature you contribute <laughs> to GitLab? <laughs> well, there are some, some issues. Um, I think the most um, well-known uh, issue is uh, the topic issue. Uh, I get the MVP award for that because yeah, it took some uh, months to, to get this into GitLab. And another uh, very uh, well-known issue, at least at the code.siemens.com uh, team, is, the, is an issue to, to add diff colors. Um, so if you are viewing some uh, merge requests, for example, uh, for example, or some commit, then the, uh, the removed text is normally red and the new text is uh, green. And I added um, a user setting that you can um, set or customize these colors. And that also took a really long time to get into GitLab. So another question from my side. It sounded like every Siemens-specific feature and merge request we get upstream uh, implemented, right? But um, is that really possible? So I c could imagine that some of the requirements that we have are too specific to be part of the product or the platform. So is there some decision board around this? Or is it just that they just take everything that they can get in order to improve the product? Or what is the process behind it? Maybe I can uh, answer your question. Uh, of course, you, don't, we d you can't get all the things in you want to have. And uh, typically, if we see uh, that might not fit with the product vision uh, and so on, uh, we, of course, then start typically within, uh, within the issue tracker. You can join all the labels upstream within codeteams.com slash theme slash code and uh, join the discussion there. And then usually we come then somehow to a conclusion what we think would be the approach to implement it, uh, to have um, a beneficial functionality for the GitLab community uh, and, and for us. And uh, then we move on and then maybe we have to rearrange or sometimes, uh, of course, Jonas is mentioning us also within the public issue tracker to give feedback, well, how you envision to use that functionality at Siemens and so on. Uh, um, and most of the team members of the core team, of course, also contributed uh, many features to GitLab. Uh, so we're also recognized within the community and, uh, and uh, know the, the people and the maintainers. You mentioned you mentioned the large number of open issues and sometimes slow review process. Uh, can you share some secret tips and tricks to get attention on issues or speed up the process? Yeah, so if you um, are in the community and you uh, submitted some merge requests, um, with the time you get to uh, know the uh, relevant people on GitLab. So it's really helpful if you know who's responsible for that uh, area and then just mention these uh, guys and yeah, it will save some time. Any other question here from the room? There, there's one uh, from uh, remote. Um, do you know how many uh, MVPs, most valuable person of release, uh, awards uh, Siemens uh, employees or contractors uh, received? I guess that might be five or six or so. <laughs> but I've uh, checked. <laughs> I've just checked. It's ten. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other questions? Then I would say thank you very, very much, uh, Jonas, for working with us and for uh, the presentation. <laughs>